Good morning. <sighs> Sorry, I just had to do that. I always feel like I just need a sip right before I go live and then it goes live when I get to sip. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Let's get church prep ready. We're going to do a devotion. My 100 Days of Life Changing Confidence. If you haven't voted on what our new... Um, devotion should be coming up soon in time for the fall i'll go ahead and post it in my stories again so you guys can vote and make sure that you're getting my newsletter so that you have updates anytime i do that if you miss out on the devotions good happy sunday are you guys ready to open up our glow bundle I love this little bag that I got. It came with my collagen coffee. You get your chocolate collagen. You're going to get your um, Hydra Drops for plumping your skin. Look how good my forehead's looking. Um, you're going to get my chicory coffee and some other things that I can't remember. Or you can get my makeup bundle and say glow instead. So say health if you want my health chocolate collagen coffee bundle with a cute bag or if you want the little cute canvas bag that comes with my glow bundle you'll get that hey my kids are not happy with me right now because i told them they need to get off screens for a little while today because i let them get on all day yesterday and i could see an effect in their behavior can you imagine? And um, it's funny because I always, you know, knew that they acted a little different when they were not on screens. You know, their attention span's really bad, their lack of judgment, their um, arguing, irritability. I've just noticed a huge difference. And usually when I tell them to get off screens, I try not to be on it as much as well because obviously, I mean, he should role model what you teach. But and then I also battle with, well, you don't always have to do the same thing that they do because you're not on screens all the time. So even though you tell them, like, it's not like you've been on all day, but, you know, I struggle with that sometimes. Does anybody else, anybody else feel like, you know, they, they're trying to set example for their kids too and they feel like a lot of screen time is just too much? Uh, what they're doing at this current moment. So yeah, I battle with that a lot. Come say hey. Give me a hashtag replay if you're watching later. Thank you for stopping by. If you haven't checked out this month's bundles, make sure that you say July. If you're looking for something to fit your budget, you can message me or comment down below and say budget. And I can help you with what you're looking for. You don't have to buy the whole kit and boodle to get what you want. And then if you're looking for 50% off, all you got to do is say info. I can show you how you can get 50% off on all of your goodies. And you don't have to sell if you don't want to. All right. With that said, though, um, I did listen to a study the other day. And it was actually on the... What, what am I trying to say? Because when I'm looking away, I can't concentrate. Um, I did a study... I did not do a study, Daphne. You you heard a study on <laughs> on the radio. Can we focus for a minute? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to eat my focus gummies in a minute. But um, it was saying that it noticed that kids who um, were on screens a lot, it was affecting them psychologically, and that um, taking away their recreational screen time a little bit and reducing it is not gonna hurt anything. In fact, they noticed a huge difference, and I'm just like, thank you, and I'm like, so glad that my daughter heard that, because I was like, I'm not doing this just to, you know, torment you. I'm literally, I promise, doing this when I start noticing y'all have an issue, and so it does seem like a punishment, because most of the time when I do reduce their screen times, I'll usually do it um, when I'm logically thinking about it, like starting in the next, I would say, two weeks. I'll usually start reducing their screen times so they can start getting used to going back to schedule for school. Because school, you know, we don't let them get on screens unless it's to look something up, their calculator, whatever, just like normal school. And then everything else is like after chore time, which is in the afternoons, we have a schedule set. Otherwise, them kids ain't going to get nothing done if we don't go on a schedule. So, um, with that said, normally, um, 
that's when I start reducing their screen times. But during the summer, you know, they're so used to being on a lot that I have to intentionally announce that's what we're doing and that it's not a punishment. Well, then there are other times when I start noticing that they're being really like short with each other and they won't answer when I call them. They won't respond back when I say something. I'm like, mm mm. If you can't, if you can't answer because you're so distracted by what you're doing, we need to take that away. And honestly, I feel like even God wants us to be that way. He's like, you know, if, if, if you are seeking me out and you want help with something, I'm going to take away, he, he says, I'm going to take away your distraction until, until it's gone and you can't focus on that. And all you can focus is on me. Now, God will not always do that. Okay. Okay. In fact, one of the things I absolutely love, I was reading some more of Louis Giglio's book called Don't Let the Enemy Have a Seat at Your Table. And he was talking about this couple. Let me see if I can pull it out because I forget their name. It's Catherine Wolf. Oh, it's Jeff and Catherine Wolf. So they um, met in Sanford University when they were young going to school. He was a lawyer and she was going to be a beauty model or whatever and I think she was like taking business or whatever and um anyways they get married they fall in love they have a baby and um Catherine is lit she was named literally Miss Sanford of of the um university because she's so pretty and um she was going to do modeling and actress work when they moved to California. And when she became pregnant with her child, she gave birth. And literally six months afterwards, she's walking in the living room, felt her hands and her legs go numb, was feeling dizzy, and her stomach started hurting. And all of a sudden, she collapsed on the floor before she even turned on the television. And um, they rushed her to the hospital, found out she had a huge brain aneurysm like one of the biggest there's ever been like a huge one and um she ended up having a huge stroke because of it and the whole I want to say it's the left side of her face is what got paralyzed and she was in a coma I think for several months and they they were able to do a lot of operations and stuff on her but she had a lot of neuro neurological issues and still battled some, I think, while he was writing the book, Louis Giglio, who's a friend of theirs, and they were praying. And um, one of the things that says in Habakkuk, and even Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have been through this, that there are times that life itself, life itself has nothing to do with God. Yes, it's a byproduct of God, but, but how life is now has nothing to do with God. And when we associate the things that happen to us in life with God being an uncaring God because he allowed it to happen, it's because our view is so skewed. We're sitting there and we're associating that what happens in life is, a, is what God allows or happens when really it is a byproduct of sin and how he entered into the world. Okay, He came up with a solution for it. Can I get an amen? He came up with a solution for everything that went wrong. But in the process, until everything comes to play, we have to deal with the byproduct of life. And life can be really tough. And it's it's tough on those who are saved and called his children. And it is rough on those who are not. And we sit there and we say, well, hell is nothing but a punishment from a God that doesn't want, if, if, we, if he doesn't get his way, like, that, that's his way of punishing us. No, it's not. That's just the only other option there is, okay? You can sit there and argue it all day long, but sometimes in life there's only the few options that you have and you can't really get mad about it, all right? And when the grand scheme of everything in life is there's only one other option, you either do it your way or you do it God's way. And your way is just not going to work. You can't get upset about that because that is how life ended up happening as a byproduct of sin. It's us getting mad at something getting messed up and blaming God on that when he didn't have nothing to do with how it got messed up. 
And so he did create a solution, but if we aren't happy with the solution, we have to deal with what the consequences are. And I, it took me a long time to realize that, but I've just learned that that is what happens. And I want my faith to be so big because, I mean, let's face it, I'm a human too. And there's times where my faith is small. I want my faith to be so big that I want to, even if I will faith. What does that mean, Daphne? And even if I will, that even if things don't go my way, even if things are rough, even if the worst case scenario happens from life, I will still trust in my God and serve him no matter what. Even if he doesn't do anything for me, the fact that his son died for me is enough for me and I will serve him no matter what. So, um, it's a hard thing to be able to minister. It's a hard thing to grasp. It's a hard thing to live because we live in a world where when things always go wrong, we we're looking for a savior. And if that savior doesn't save us in the way that we want to be saved, we're disappointed. And, and it's understandable because even Christ himself said, God, I prefer not to do it this way. I would prefer not to have to sacrifice my life to do this. But if it's your will, even if I will. And that's how Jesus did. And if Jesus did it that way, I'm going to do it that way. It may not be the most selfless, sacrificing way that he did. But I will. I want to do it that way. I want to live that way. Um, even when I'm upset, I want to serve him. And... Habakkuk has a beautiful scripture and I was going to actually read out of a hundred days of life changing confidence. But I think today we're just going to talk about this because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that need to hear this. There's a lot of people that are facing disappointment and hardship right now. And when God doesn't come riding in on a noble steed, like their, their, their steed and a knight in shining armor, they get disappointed. And I can think even women can attest to this or men. When you get married and you're going through the honeymoon phase, everything seems amazing. <clears throat> everything seems amazing. And then that honeymoon phase wears off. And you see flaws that maybe you didn't, you were willing to overlook while you were dating. And it gets a little harder because now you're having to live with that. Or maybe, you know, they don't live up to the way that you thought that it was going to be. Maybe, you know, you thought when you were growing up, I don't know about y'all, but I had an unrealistic expectation. I'm just going to tell you what I did. I had an unrealistic expectation from love movies and romance movies and Disney. I'm sorry, but Disney, uh, growing up on Disney movies and cartoons and um, princess stories is a little bit, is a little bit, um, of a scam, if you, if you, if you will. I'm glad things like Frozen and stuff come out because even though it's a little more realistic, it helps you to focus on something more like the love of a sister instead of like romance. I feel like they're getting a little bit better now with that situation, but Disney's got its own set of problems, so we're not going to talk too much about that. Um, but... One of the things that I just struggled with growing up was that um, I expected the person that I was going to fall in love with to come in like a knight in shining armor and sweep me off my feet and just have this romantic view of how I wanted to be loved. And I didn't even know how to love myself right. I didn't know that I was full of insecurities and I didn't know that I was still very immature and I didn't know that love didn't work that way. True love is not all about impressing you and doing all the things you want to do. Love was going through hard times and doing things and having compassion even when you didn't feel like it. That's, that's what love was. Hey mom! And so, yeah, I feel like the Disney movies did you wrong when you were in the 90s and the 80s because it made you feel like it was supposed to be some prince that was supposed to come and, like, save the day. But that's not what true love is like. True love is telling each other and communicating correctly um, the things that you need in a partner and being there for them even through hard times. And that's not always beautiful sounding or looks beautiful. <laughs> what are you doing this morning? 
so <clears throat> this is what Habakkuk says, okay? And this is what I was trying to, the point I was trying to go back to when I was talking about I want it even if I will faith, okay? Even though the fig trees have no fruit and the grapes grow no grapes will grow on the vine. And even though the olive crops fail and the fields produce no grain, and even though the sheep all die and the cattle stalls are empty, I will still be joyful and glad because the Lord God is my Savior. Habakkuk 3, 17, 18. Even though I will. Just relaxing, you go girl. I'm gonna relax when we get back from church. Not like it's stressful, but yeah, I'm just gonna be chilling on the couch. That's what we did yesterday because it was all raining. So I wanna even though or even if this happens, I will. Because I don't want God to think that I'm just waiting on him to follow all of my commands and all of my answer all my prayers and then I'll love him or that I'll only love him because he provides fire insurance that I'm not going to hell. You know what I mean? Like I don't want that kind of relationship. And if we base even if we base our relationship like that with the God of the universe, I mean, how are we supposed to even say that? our other relationships are any better like if you can't even have a good relationship with the god of the universe you definitely know your your relationships with people on earth can't be that much better so we can always better that we can always better that faith like lord even though i will habakkuk basically said that even though there's not a harvest and even though his crops fail and even though the fields are destroyed and even though the stalls in my provision are empty i will still be joyful and glad because god is my savior i'm not lost my faith right? In fact, my faith has gotten even greater. I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm still going to worship him. I'm not going to get sidetracked by the attitudes or the actions that harm me. When I encounter hard times, my faith doesn't deflate, it inflates. Now, faith is the hope in the things that are unseen. So, you know, it goes a lot with saying like, it even says in the Bible, no man has seen God. Even Moses himself did not see God. And if you go back and check, it will. His face literally glowed from the presence of God. But we were laughing about it yesterday with the kids. It was literally from God's backside. <laughs> God told him, go hide in this crevice over here. And when I pass by, as I pass, then you can look. But don't look upon my face because any man that sees my face will die because they can't stand the glory of, they can't be within the whole entire presence of the Lord. So then Moses looked after he had passed and his face would glow, was glowing from the presence of the Lord. It was that powerful. So when he came down from the mountain, he would wear a veil over his head. And any time that the priest or anybody would talk to him, um, he would lift that veil, but, um, in the presence of the people, he would keep the veil past. Can you imagine how like spooky kind of that was to see a man covered in a veil and pass by and like his face would literally be glowing from the presence of the Lord. The, the, the normal people couldn't handle it, let alone Moses. Um, so there's no person that has actually seen God in person. They've seen his angels. They've had been in visions and things like that, but they've never been able to actually see his face because of how glorious he is. So that's the kind of faith that it was actually Jay, not Jeff, Jay and Catherine Wolf had when Catherine had to be in months of uh, being 26 years old, literally a model and an actress like like Mrs. Sanford from the freaking university and have to be uh, go through the stroke and a brain aneurysm and her whole face to be paralyzed and to learn how to rewalk again and not really even be able to interact with her brand new baby that she had until he was over two years old for them to inflate their faith and to dive in more and to help out people through that process that's the kind of faith that I want that's the kind of faith I want to see I want the Habakkuk 3 17 through 18 and then I want the kind of faith that when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego do you guys remember them it was King Nebuchadnezzar I think it was I don't know if that was him, but it was one of those, it was one of those kings during the Dan Daniel's time. I think it was King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, this guy, King Nebuchadnezzar, let's just say that's his name. I want to say that's who it was. You can look it up in Daniel 3. Um, he built a huge, had a huge statue raised up in his name, Golden Image. He wanted everyone to bow down when music would play throughout the day to his image. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're like, no, like, we're not going to bow down to you, okay? They said to the king, he was about to throw them into a fiery furnace. He said, if we, if, so it's like, even, even if, even if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Even if they didn't know, they believed God would save them, but they said, even if he doesn't, we will not bow down. And that's the kind of faith I want. I don't want a conditional faith. I want an unconditional faith. Can I get an amen? I, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of faith I want. That even if... God forbid that my children were in pain and suffering and dying. Even if I had to take my last breath and everything that I said, like I've been talking about with my husband's medicine has been unfair. I want to be like, I still choose to, sh to serve you, God, because I know you are a good God. And I know that you have the plans for a future to prosper me and not harm me, it says in Jeremiah. And so if we know that and we believe in that, nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us and tell us anything different, not even in our own disbelief. Sometimes it's our disbelief that gets us in the way of um, having a good relationship with God. It's not even Satan. Like we'd be giving Satan way too much credit sometimes. And sometimes it'll just be us. So yeah, that's the kind of faith I want. And we're going to stop on that today. But if you haven't ever got this book, I highly suggest it. Don't get the enemy a seat at your table. There's only at your table a seat for two. It's you and God. And the enemy is going to try everything that he can to discourage you and distract you and lie to you and get you to not pay attention while he's trying to sneak into that seat at your table. And the Lord ain't giving up his table because he said he's preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. So you got to be willing to say the same thing like, I'm not giving up my seat. The enemy can sit there and starve. He can starve. And remember that our enemies are not flesh and blood, the people of this world. Our enemies are the spirit world, demons, and powers of principalities is what it says. That's not our war. Our war isn't against people. Our war isn't against, no matter how much Satan uses other people, that's not who we have our beef with and our issues with. We have our issues with Satan himself. And so we got to recognize that. Like, I was talking to somebody about this and I was like, you don't have to be unsaved to let the devil work in you. You can be a fully saved person and let the devil influence you and work in you. No, he's not possessing you. No, he doesn't have power over you unless you give it to him. And yes, you can take that power back 100,000%. So take your seat back. Stop letting the enemy think that he has power over you. Put him back where he belongs, which is underneath your feet. You are the head and not the tail. You are a conqueror. You are a royal ambassador with God. And you are in this, his inheritor. So take that. Hey, Rebecca. Take it. Do what you want with it. But just remember, the enemy is... Uh, the thing is, the enemy, which is Satan, is dumb. Okay? He does the same old, same old stuff every single time. He's not very creative. I don't know what they're... I don't think they're arguing, so I'm not too worried. He's not gonna he's not gonna really try anything new. Satan doesn't. He does the same old, same old stuff. It's us who decides to allow him to do the same old, same old stuff. But the thing that I will give credit for the enemy is he's consistent. He doesn't give up. He'll let you think that he's gone away for a little bit and you might have cast him out for a little bit, but he'll come right back with that same old stuff and be like, Hey, remember this? In fact, I've got to tell y'all a little story. I'm kind of, it kind of makes my heart sad. But then at the same time, I have to watch it and say, God, don't let me be too judgmental. Because even though I don't have an issue with this particular problem, 
I have my own issues that I fight back and forth over and over again. I have to get delivered for on a daily basis, okay, and have to get renewed for. So even if we don't have an issue with something that gets on our nerves from somebody else and you're like, God dang it, they're so stupid or God dang, I can't believe that they do that. Just remember, we may not have an issue with that particular demon in our life, but there is something else we're entertaining on a regular basis, okay? So, just because other people can't see it or we haven't revealed it to other people doesn't mean it ain't going to be brought out to light because when God is going to work in your life, he's going to bring it out to light. So, you might as well do it yourself before somebody else brings it out, all right? So, we were I was in this mom group and this lady anonym, anonymously posted... She said, um, I'm on like day four of my Daniel Fest. And for anybody that wants to know what a Daniel Fest is, it's basically eat a certain kind of, I think it's like only fruits and vegetables and stuff. I've never personally went on one because I never felt like I needed to. But some people go on it and they kind of do a fasting and they only eat like a certain kind of fruits and vegetables and things like that as they are fasting for the Lord. And there's different kinds of fast. There's some that you don't drink any food. I mean, drink any food. There's some you don't eat any food for a certain amount of time. And then there's others where you just eat a little cleaner and a specific thing like Daniel did in the Bible. Um, so don't ask me how all that goes because I don't personally feel like I need to do that. But if it ever comes down to it, I will give it a try. Um, anyway, she's like, I'm on day four of my Daniel fast and it just keeps popping up about thoughts of my ex. And I just feel like he's the one. I love him so much. And it, what comes to be so even weird, weirder about this is um, he just contacted me after months of not being able to speak to him. He just contacted me. So I feel like this is supposed to be and blah, blah, blah. What do I do? And then at the very end, she says, but the issue that I'm facing is I'm married. I'm like, what the heck, girlfriend? And it was easy for me to be like, uh, obviously, uh, don't contact this guy. He's an ex. He's meant to be an ex. Hello. Like, don't go after him. That's clearly Satan trying to tempt you. But I don't, I, then I realized, like, obviously, that's a stronghold she has in her life that I don't have. But I have other strongholds. Okay? And so, we got to remember, like, before we're quick to be a keyboard, what I call a key keyboard warrior where we're quick to respond in judgment to other people and say oh my gosh I can't believe blah 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 we got to remember like it, we may not go through the same exact issue but we go through something okay we go through something so anyways what I told her is I got I said remember I said I don't know if you personally did this but if he was an ex and you had sexual relationships with him you are cleaved to him even a little bit spiritually because that is one thing that God allowed when, uh, you know, Abraham first got with his wife. That was the first thing that was happens is when you had sexual relations and in, in Adam and Eve, you would become as one and you're cleaved spiritually to one another. So you're going to have some kind of spiritual bond with this guy, whether or not you want to or not. So, so that's the first thing you need to pray about is to break that spiritual bond because that's the one thing that's a blessing with God is we become bonded to our significant others once that special part of the relationship that happens. And that's what's supposed to be by God. And anytime we do it outside of marriage, unfortunately, it causes extra complications because that's not how it was supposed to go. Okay. Now, and then I told her, I was like, you need to realize this is Satan and the enemy trying to use it to to his advantage because he knows that that's something that you're struggling with but you are married and the god will never ever tell somebody they need to leave their marriage in order to seek somebody else he may have you separate if you're getting beat and separate from one another and you can pray over that person or whatever but um he's not going to tell you to go find another person <laughs> he's not he's not going to do that um and so, anyway, I don't care what anybody else says. It doesn't say in the Bible to go after somebody else. That's not going to be God's will. And um, and so I told her, like, you know, I'll be praying for you, but that is not going to be something that's in God's will. That um, everything always looks better when you're not with another person because I mean the grass always looks greener on the other side but you have to be the one to water it you know what I mean you got to realize sometimes even the grass on the other side is artificial okay it ain't even the real grass and you just seeing what you see and you're like oh that sure looks nice 
you know, or it's got pesticides in it or something crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> that whole grass is greener on the other side. There's so many, there's so many things going wrong with that, with that thing. But anyways, I gave her a lot more scriptural assistance than that. But the key was that she was clearly fighting something that she thought that she was supposed to be together with her ex. And she was clearly married. And I'm like, honey, I don't care if your marriage is in shambles. You need to work on that marriage and stop trying to entertain something that the devil is going to have you looking somewhere else. It's a distraction. You know what I'm saying? But, and then me and my husband had a talk. I was like, isn't it crazy that there's legitimately people out there that like they'll see, they'll not even care about some dude. And then they find out he's available. He's not available. He has a ring on his finger and that's what a girl wants to go after. I'm like, that is crazy. Or even a man. A man will do that too. I mean, there, it's not just women or men. But it's crazy to me that there's people out there that legitimately look for unavailable people and want to ruin the relationship so they could get something that they knew that they can't have. I'm like, that is the most awful thing I've ever heard in my life. And then I try to remember that I'm a sinner too. And that Christ does forgive me. And that I'm not perfect. And the day I will be is the day I'll be in heaven with him. I'm made perfect in him, but myself individually, I'm not a, a perfect person. So I'm just like, try to remember that. Cause it is so easy to be up on here on social media and be like, Oh my word. Or on the opposite side of that, be like, Oh my gosh, they're always traveling. They got the best life. They must have so much money. They, they have the perfect marriage. And we don't see behind the scenes. We only see what people choose to show us on social media. I want to remind you. It's all just what people want to show you. The devil will try to make it look like it is all wonderful on their side of the camp. Everybody's got their own issues. I can promise you that. It's a trap. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> All right, we got to hurry up because I'm probably about to, our, um, we're about to get our car fixed in the next week. As you know, I've always been back and forth with this vehicle, but my husband loves it and that's all that matters. And so I try to be patient with this stupid vehicle and it wants to get on my last nerves. And so, um, the last time, though, that something has happened to it has been my own fault, and it had nothing to do with the vehicle. So I'm dealing with my own repercussions on that, but I have a nice friend that is picking us up for church until we get this car fixed. Because your girl done backed it into a pole, and that is not anybody's fault but yours truly. It's kind of embarrassing. But you know what? I am not above admitting when I'm wrong when I know that I'm wrong. If I'm going through something and I'm still struggling with it spiritually, I may not admit it. <laughs> But if I know I'm wrong, I'm going to admit it. That's the one thing you're going to get out of me. I am always going to try to be as transparent as possible. I'm not going to be trying to lie to you for, for appearance. Because I just don't feel like I need to impress anybody at this point in my life. Can I get an amen? Is anybody else like that? They're like done with trying to impress people. You're either in my, in my circle or you're not in my circle. Can I get an amen? Alright. Let's go ahead and I need to put some lips on today i hope you're having a wonderful 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 day i hope that you are setting yourself up for success today whether it's getting a little bit of some time for devotion with the lord or it's taking some personal time for yourself that you haven't normally or it's making yourself be a little more productive because maybe the enemy has been in your kool-aid a little too much and um you're like, I haven't got nothing done. Make yourself a little list today and do that unless you need a break. And or spend time with your family if you haven't got a chance to do that. Whatever that looks like. We're not all on the same journey, on the same chapter. And I try to remind my team that. I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter how well somebody else is doing over there. If you, you can't compare your chapter 1 to their chapter 100. You absolutely cannot. You don't know what they've been through, just like I was talking about. We don't know what people are going through. All we can do is show a little kindness here and there. And pray that the same will happen to us when we're in that situation. 
because we're all one step away from something dramatic happening to us and only God can be able to predict that, you know? You know what I mean? All right, uh, I need to figure out where my eyeshadow is. Okay, we're gonna use that Mirage eyeshadow. That's my favorite. Today, it's my favorite all matte palette. Mm -hmm. We show you. And uh, uh, I need my cleaner. All right, so today is what the 21st. So we literally have a little over a week before the end of the month. If you haven't had a chance to grab my deals, I am going to tell you to check out the Speckled Cactus. Or you can message me if you need a special on your foundation or I need a little update on your um, mascara. Maybe you need a, a mascara update and you haven't tried out my amazing $11 mascara. You need to check it out. I'm telling you, it is freaking awesome. I used to think my $55 uh, mascara was awesome and it was great, but I didn't really <laughs> realize how good this one was. And I was like, okay, my mind has been changed. <laughs> yeah, so we changed real quick on that. And I love that I can offer affordable luxury to anybody that maybe like you're having to choose between groceries and taking care of yourself and I just don't want that to be a decision that people have to make like I want them to be able to have everything in abundance for themselves and yeah makeup's not always a want I mean a need it is a want but it doesn't mean that it, it can't be on your list you know what I'm saying like it is totally possible to still be able to take care of yourself and have fun and enjoy all the things okay but just do it in the right way find yourself um a good discount like I have and if you haven't tried the 50% discount, all you got to just say info and I'll send you the details on that. All right, I got to fill in these brows a little bit because this is kind of a little more auburn than I wanted it to be. And it's still looking a little auburn in my opinion. I'm going to fill this in. I feel like whatever it is, it's just looking super auburny. Am I the only one or does that look auburn to you? Hey, are y'all fighting or are you getting along? All right, it just sounded like you were saying stop and yelling, so. Oh, okay. Did you eat your food? Did you eat your food? All right, good job. I don't know why, but I've never known that I've had to freaking tell children that they need to eat food. I'm like, what kid is not hungry in the morning? But I'm, I'll be danged if my kids, every time I got to tell them, did you eat food? Before we go somewhere. Did you eat food? I think this is just going to look auburn, y'all. I'm going to put some powder over it and let it be done. But is anybody else like that? Like, they're having to tell their kids to eat. And then they then the kids want a snack, like, throughout the day. And I'm like, I gave my son, because I knew he wasn't going to eat anything, some goldfish crackers. And I know it's, hey, don't hit my, uh-uh. But I'm like, I'm like, here. And I just handed him some goldfish crackers. He wasn't going to eat anything. And then he was going to want snacks. He was going to want snacks when it was time to do anything else. Like, it's it never fails. It's literally within 30 minutes before we're getting ready to eat. And he's like, can I have a snack? I'm like, no, we're getting ready to eat. See? Look at this. Does that not look Auburn to y'all? That is driving me crazy. That is driving me insane. I need to fix this or this is going to drive me absolutely crazy. <laughs> I can't do this. Celebrate. Celebrate. Mm -hmm. We're going to dull these down a little bit. <laughs> you seen how crazy they were looking? I know y'all were, and y'all weren't going to help a sister out at all, were you? Shame on you if you get on here and you don't be helping me out. If I saw a booger in your nose, I would sure enough tell you, you got a booger in your nose. Come here real quick and let's go to the bathroom. That's the first thing I did with my husband when I met him. We weren't even dating. I was like, come here. 
You got a booger in your nose. <laughs> Y'all got to help a person out, okay? Don't be like that. Don't sit there and try to hope for people to fail. You're supposed to be helping people out. It's okay if you don't like my makeup. But y'all better tell me when I got something funky going on. If you say something like my whole face is funky, well, I'm sorry. I can't help that. Jesus made that that way. You'll have to take that up with him, not me. Take that up with him, not me. All right. Let's. Okay, so we did a little bit of a lip liner. We're going to add a little bit of a lippy real quick. And let's do a lip gloss, shall we? I don't know when these people are supposed to be coming, but I better put some regular shoes on. I'm putting a little bit of some hydrating lipstick on. I don't like just matte lipstick. It drives me crazy. Can I get an amen from anybody? Y'all ain't gonna amen me. Y'all just not gonna say nothing today. All right, it's okay. All right. It's okay. Gotta clap for your own self. Let everybody else be silent. All right. That's pretty. I like that. I'm gonna get some more coffee. I hope you are following those tips on how to press in your foundation and layer for longevity during the summer. So you don't feel like you have to go without just because you're like, oh, it's so hot. You can still make it happen. You can still make it happen. Okay. That's our final result. That's our final result. I love y'all. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to stay sharp and always be on point. And I will see you.